integrated math three practice test for t and ready on this version of the test it's question number 27. the test scores on the mathematics test in a class are normally distributed which means we're going to make a bell curve which i'm not great at drawing but here we are um, with a mean of 82 so that value here right in the middle and you're going to lie to yourself and pretend you that's a straight line is going to be 82 with a standard deviation of five now the thing about normal distribution is we can calculate percentages outside of certain um, standard deviations so at this one we're talking like 87 and down here we're looking at 77 and then over here we're looking at 92 and at this, we're looking at 72, and then out here, we're going to do 67, and then from here, we're doing 97, something like that. Now, each one of these represents, this is one standard deviation, this is two standard deviations, this is three standard deviations, the above and below the mean. And actually, I'll change colors on these, that way it'll make it easier to explain other things in just a second. So, 2, and then 3. So, percentage-wise, the distance between this full section, one standard deviation away, is a significant portion of the overall set. The whole thing is about 68%, which would be 34 over here and 34 over here. For two standard deviations, you're looking at something close to 95%. That's total amount, by the way. It's not 95 over here and 95 over here. It's you take 95, break it into two parts, and then subtract 34 to find your value here. And then for three, you're looking at around 99% of all data falls into that group. But we don't really need to know that here. We're really only working with one standard deviation because Robert scored an 87, which, as we can see, is the value of the standard deviation of a single point of standard deviation. So he's really in here. Now, we want to know about students who scored higher than he scored. So all of this over here doesn't actually matter because we're not dealing with anything lower. Robert is right here on this curve. We want to know what this is. Well, if this half of it is 50% of the total of the class or possible scores, and 34% are lower than him on that 50%. So this of this whole 50%, 34% is less. It's whatever is left over that gives us the who scored, how do they score higher? 6, 16. So what's left, 34 plus 16. So this value here is 16% of students earned a higher score on the test than Robert. So for this type of question, how do you prepare? Take a look at a normal distribution, kind of memorize some of the percentages, generally speaking, it doesn't have to be an exact match, but really think about, okay, if we're doing before or after, what those values are, you'll probably wanna break it down into individual percentages as opposed to one standard deviation is 68%. You should sort of get in your head 34 and 34 and then find out these values and have those sort of rolling around in your head. You'll see those in a lot of math classes as you move forward even if you're just taking basic statistics that pops up a lot so this is one of those things that you can actually carry over and use from time to time so it might be a good idea just to get that in your head